the Atari Mindlink was a gaming accessory that aimed to revolutionise the gaming industry by allowing players to control games using their thoughts. In this video, we'll look at what the Mindlink was and why it was cancelled. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps this small channel grow. The Mindlink consisted of a headband that was worn by the player. This contained a set of sensors that detected electrical signals from the muscles in the player's forehead. These signals were then transmitted to the console, which would translate the signals into on-screen actions. To use the Mindlink, players would first need to calibrate the device by performing a series of specific facial movements, such as raising their eyebrows or clenching their jaw. This allowed the device to establish a baseline for the player's muscle activity. Once the device was calibrated, the player could then use a series of mental commands to control their game. For example, to move their character forward, the player would need to concentrate on the movement and produce a specific pattern of electrical signals with their forehead muscles. Atari had high hopes for the Mindlink, believing that it could lead to a new era of immersive gaming. The device was showcased at various industry events and generated a lot of buzz among gaming enthusiasts. However, as development progressed, it became clear that the Mindlink had several technical issues that were difficult to overcome. One of the main problems was that the Mindlink was prone to interference from other electrical devices. This made it difficult for the device to accurately detect the player's brainwaves and translate them into meaningful in-game actions. Additionally, the device required frequent calibration, which was time-consuming and often frustrating for users. Another major issue with the Mindlink was its high price tag. The device was expected to cost around $150, which was a significant amount of money for a gaming accessory in the 1980s. Additionally, there were concerns that the device would only work with a limited range of compatible games, which would limit its appeal to consumers. Despite these issues, Atari continued to work on the Mindlink for several years, but ultimately decided not to release it to the public. The device remained a failed experiment in mind-controlled gaming and a cautionary tale for developers looking to create similar technologies in the future. Would you have bought a Mindlink and do you think we'll see anything similar in the future? Please do subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.